Hi everybody, I'm Britt. I'm Justin, and this is our DIY bus conversion. We're in Santa Cruz, California, and we've been living in our tiny home for about four months now. So we actually met on a dating app, um, Hinge, shout out to Hinge. They do great work. <laughs> Had our first date at a brewery, really hit it off. Um, met his family literally like a week or two later, which was kind of crazy. But um, so we started dating and then a year later, COVID happened. So I think the pandemic kind of kicked off our relationship or kind of made it get serious pretty quickly. So we spent a lot of time together during the pandemic eventually ended up living together and working from home together. And then, yeah, decided to do the bus with our two dogs. Yeah, so we were we were pretty well prepped for living in a tiny space together because we were in a one bedroom apartment throughout the whole pandemic, working and being like that close to each other. And we're like this, like, you know, we can definitely do this. And then she showed me the bus video on TikTok and I was like, let's do it. I think yeah. she expected me to, um, maybe say no or like we can't do that but I was definitely all for it and you know we got kind of obsessive and almost bought a bus within the first week that wouldn't yeah. have been the right fit but thankfully um, we ended up being a little patient and we definitely found the right one yeah another huge factor for us was obviously the pandemic like working remote um, was something that we had never done before and you know we were just sitting in our offices in our house every day and you know just passing the time and we were like we could be doing so much more with our time seeing so much of the country that we've never been able to explore um and our priorities definitely shifted from you know buying the house and doing you know the traditional steps in life to mm -hmm. trying to prioritize some of the smaller things and just enjoying our time together a little more and being able to see loved ones and new places that yeah. we've never seen So we're currently parked in Santa Cruz, California at Justin's dad's house. We decided to come here and visit them a few weeks ago and we're extending our stay and exploring the area for a few weeks. It's a 30 foot school bus. It has a CAT 3126 six cylinder motor, 2002 Bluebird around 200 horsepower with the back deck and the front rack, it's probably up to around 35 feet actually. We have 1200 watts of solar on top, um, six 200 watt panels. Uh, we have a multiple input, multiple output antenna that brings in our Wi-Fi uh, that runs to a MoFi uh, router with a SIM card in it. Then that lets us work every day. <laughs> and then on the back, we added a back deck. The thought is we don't want to have to move the bus every time we want to go get groceries or go out to eat or something when we're exploring different towns. Oops. So Justin and his stepbrother built this awesome back deck that we are going to store either a moped or some electric bikes on. Let's go take a look inside. Welcome to the G-Wagon bus. So we picked a school bus for a few different reasons. One is we have two pretty large dogs, so we wanted to make sure that they had room to walk around freely in the bus. Um, we also both work remotely, so we wanted to make sure that we had room for us to both be on calls at the same time, but not be in each other's ears. And then third was we wanted to make sure that we could walk around without hitting our heads and the height of the school bus worked perfectly. So starting with the front of the bus, we wanted to keep the driver's area looking like the original bus. So it looks a lot like it would if we were driving kids to school, but we did add some methods of storage so we can kind of keep everything looking nice and tidy. This huge cabinet, which was used for first aid and everything, kind of still is. So we have all of our vitamins and good stuff in here. Um, also some random like fishing equipment. We have some fire safety stuff but as you can see, it's packed to the brim and it holds a lot of stuff. And Justin can talk to you guys a little bit about the Wi-Fi. Yeah, so we have a MIMO antennas on the outside that runs into this MoFi network router. 
We have a third-party plan through a company called Technology that uses AT&T service. We've been in very rural areas and haven't really had any issues um, with internet so far. So it's worked great for us. Um, we both work remotely and we're on Zoom, you know, the majority of the day during the week. It's been sufficient enough. No calls have dropped. Everything's been running smoothly. And one thing we did install is this backup camera. Um, it also has another channel to show our right side as well, which can be helpful for security reasons whenever we're parked in a parking lot or Walmart per se. <laughs> Here in the living room, we have our sofa. We did a custom base for it. Also pulls out into a sofa bed that makes it great for our guests to sleep, um, as well as our dogs to take naps. And then underneath the sofa, we have all of our solar equipment. So we have a 24 volt system. We have six 200 watt panels on the roof. So that comes in about uh, 1200 watts. And then we have an MPPT charge controller 600 amp hours of 12 volt lithium batteries. Uh, we have a 3000 watt inverter. It's been able to run everything very smoothly. We're even able to run our air conditioner, which I know is a problem for a lot of other buses or solar setups. So that's been really nice on those hot days. <laughs> Overnight, we maybe get down to 70%, but we'll be back up to 100% by you know one o'clock in the afternoon the next day. So. Even if it's gray outside, we still get um, you know around 500 watts, so it's been pretty awesome. And then we have this AFO, uh, fire extinguisher ball, so at a certain temperature, uh, that will explode and extinguish a fire. So fire safety was a, a big thing for us initially, especially because we did a lot of our own electrical, but um, we have a couple of these, one in the back as well. Um, it definitely provides some peace of mind in case anything were to happen. Over here next to the couch, we have our Cubic Mini Grizzly. Um, we have this fan here that's actually operated from heat, so as soon as it gets to a certain temperature, it turns on, no need for electric. This is great for keeping the bus warm. We've been in uh, 10 degree weather and it's you know kept the bus pretty toasty. Um, I think moving forward, like we would like to get a diesel heater if we do plan on um, staying you know, in places that are, are that cold a lot because as small as it is, it can really go through some wood. <laughs> Still in the front of the bus, I um, wanted to show you guys one of our work areas. So like I mentioned, both of us work remotely full time. So it was really important to us to have comfortable areas to, you know, spend nine to five every day. So we put in this retractable table. It actually collapses, but since we use it every day, it pretty much stays up the whole time. So one person sits up here. We have this nice computer monitor with an HDMI cord that we can plug into. We also just added this little drawer here for some extra storage. So we'll take turns working either from here or from this little portable table that can be used either as a standing desk or a sitting desk on the couch or the bed. So we paid $4,500 for the bus itself. And then we put between 25 and 30,000 into the build. You can obviously do that for way cheaper or way more if you want, but just knowing that this was going to be our home base and we're spending all of our time in here, mm -hmm. we definitely splurged on some things. We wanted it to look nice, so we're going to get the best materials. We did cut some corners, like all of our cabinets are either were either given to us from our old neighbor or we thrifted them. We also did Habitat for Humanity Restore for a lot of the materials. Mm -hmm. So we were able to save on some things, but we definitely splurged on things like the solar. Yeah, I think the solar was around 5,500 afterwards. And then our internet setup is, I think around $500 per se. Yeah. And then around $160 a month, but I mean, well worth it because it allows us to, you know, work and actually have income so we were lucky in that we didn't have to take out any loans. We had some savings um, that were originally going to go towards a house. So we used some of that. Every paycheck that would come in, like I said, we would do one project at a time. So that definitely helped us. We did put some stuff on a credit card. And then at the end, we sold both of our cars. So that paid off the credit cards. Yeah. We still work full time. So we're really like i know a lot of people do this and quit their jobs and you know use their time to explore which 
we hope we hope to do at one point um but we are still working full time so we're lucky that we were able to you know put all of our resources into this and it will be a long-term investment we're hoping to rent it out eventually when we have a house one day so we're hoping that our return on investment will be pretty good Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i've been in sales for like three or four years now and um Throughout like the nature of the pandemic, things went to remote, and then I moved jobs to um, a fully remote position. So then, like when people started to go back to the office, um, I was still able to work from home. I work for a pretty big beer company. I do media for them, so advertising and marketing. The nature of my job is like all on my computer, working with people through email or on the phone or on Zoom. Um, so I can really do that wherever I am, and I'm super lucky that my bosses are letting me do this even though we're like working quite a bit like the fact that we're in a different place like pretty much weekly and we're able to walk outside you know on our lunch break or so and just see the views or even work outside like Mm -hmm. just the fact that you know our environment changes I think it helps a lot with any type of work stress but like as opposed to kind of being locked into the same position or being at the office yeah So now we will walk you guys through our kitchen. Um, We like to cook a lot. So having a good size kitchen is really important to us. So up here, these again were donated cabinets from our old neighbors from their old kitchen. So we have all of our food and plate storage up here. We also throw some food up here from time to time. All of these drawers hold our spices, our pots and pans and our silverware. And we have a RCA side-by-side freezer fridge. So it holds a lot of food. We've got plenty of room for, you know, whatever we need to bring with us. We probably only go grocery shopping once a week max, um, sometimes every two weeks. So it's really important that we have enough food storage to last us until we're back in civilization. And then you might notice that we don't have a stove top. So instead of building one into the counter, we decided we would save ourselves some counter space when we're not using it and get a portable induction cooktop. So we have one of those that will bring out, um, it's a two burner that we can cook with and then we can put it away when we don't need it. And then obviously had to bring our air fryer because we love chicken nuggets and all things like that. Um, And then last but not least, we added this little spice rack. So we have some of our spices in here and then the rest are in the drawer. So one of the first things we did in the bus was install these skylights. They were just emergency hatches before, but we wanted to bring in as much natural light as possible in the bus. They have proven to be one of our biggest pain points, which we think is pretty common among the schoolie community. They were totally fine in Colorado. We would have, you know, a foot of snow up there melting and we didn't have any issues. As soon as we went to Florida and experienced that Florida torrential downpour, they started leaking pretty badly. So we've used a lot of flex seal, a lot of weather stripping to try to keep them tight. And we finally have them in a place where they're not leaking, but definitely something that I would keep in mind if you decide to build a schoolie of your own. So over here in the middle of the bus is our bathroom. Um, You'll notice that our shower is wedged between the two wheel wells, which I think is something pretty unique for schoolies. We haven't seen anybody do this before, but we just wanted the flow of the bus to be living room slash kitchen, bathroom, and then bedroom. So we made it work. It was a little tricky to route the plumbing underneath the wheel wells, but Justin worked his magic and everything for the shower drains through the middle into our gray tank so it worked out perfectly we have a shower curtain that goes around the whole shower nothing in the hallway or over by the sink and toilet gets wet we also have this retractable accordion door it's not the most private thing in the world but it doesn't take up too much space or add too much weight and we make it work we have a nature's head composting toilet Then we also have our sink with plenty of storage in the bottom for all my skincare products, which was a pretty impressive feat because I have a lot of junk. We have some shelves above the toilet as well. So plenty of room for all of our self-care stuff. You'll see we also have a dehumidifier on the floor over there. We run this every couple of days and especially when we're showering in the bus because A lot of condensation can build up on the windows, so we try to run that to prevent that as much as possible. 
Recently, we were interviewed by the New York Times about gas prices and how they have changed our plans um, living on the road. We were just talking about what our initial plans were and how they've changed, um, how we've pivoted really to try to save some money and offset the cost of gas. We didn't really think much of it. It was super exciting, but we definitely got a lot of hate online. Just a lot of people thinking we're whining, which is not the case at all. A lot of people just thinking we're like entitled brats. <laughs> so a lot said that we were killing the planet as well. And we're like, we're completely off grid, you know, like one diesel tank at a time, I guess, destroying the planet. But also we met a lot of nice people through it, like people um obviously not everyone's gonna agree with this lifestyle it's not for everyone and i totally get that either of us come from very fortunate backgrounds from a financial prospect but we've worked mm -hmm. really hard to you know create this lifestyle for ourselves and we're proud of that and we're happy and this is what we choose to do with our money but yeah to your point there's so many people that like have taken have saved up and taken time off work or mm -hmm. like work random jobs which we also think is super cool and we kind of envy them um, so there's so many people from so many different walks of life living this lifestyle and it's really cool to see like how everyone makes it work for them. Mm -hmm. All right, so here in the back of the bus, we have our bedroom. We wanted to make this really comfortable because, you know, we like coming back here and watching movies or Netflix or whatever it is. We have a queen size bed for us and usually one of the dogs. Sometimes we wake up in a Walmart parking lot and I forget where we are. <laughs> so it's really nice to just be comfortable no matter where you are, whether that's in the middle of nowhere out, you know, in some beautiful camping area or in a Planet Fitness or Walmart parking lot. And then right here, this is actually a shoe cabinet from Ikea, but there's three huge cabinets in it and it holds pretty much all of our clothes. Um, so this has been a godsend. We can fit so much in here and this stays closed while we drive. So it's really nice. Um, we also installed some child locks just in case anything tries to fly open when we're driving. We also have a cabinet behind the bed that you can't see, but um, that makes room for some extra storage. We have our AC and heater back here, which is amazing. We like to sleep with it really cold. So having the AC right above our bed is perfect. Um, and then our other skylight is right here. It's really nice to stargaze out of at night. So that is one plus of having the skylights. If we're in the middle of nowhere, we can see the sky perfectly right above our head. So that's something really cool. The bed is also on hinges, um, so we can lift it up and get to this, the clothes storage underneath it. We also have some extra blankets and towels under this side. Um, and then on the left side, by the foot of the bed, we have our 100 gallon fresh water tank. We have a lot of fresh water with us pretty much at all times. So it allows us to be off grid for a week or two at a time with having, without having to go um, and fill up as long as we are conservative with our water use. And all the way at the back of the bus, you can see our 8,000 BTU air conditioner and also access to our garage. So this space is under the bed and it houses all of our gym equipment. You can reach um, our water tank, our electrical breaker is back here as well. Um, all my tools, which is definitely something that we had to bring with us because you're, you know, with the DIY thing, you're constantly, you know, changing or improving and you need somewhere for all your tools so this has provided an awesome space for that so we have a six-year-old yes. golden doodle named echo and we have a two-year-old golden retriever named waylon they are our pride and joy we're obsessed with them they have adapted to bus life really easily i think now they associate it with like going somewhere fun and whenever we reach our destination they're able you know go hiking and hang out outside a lot it is close quarters for a dog for sure but i mean when we lived in the house they would both literally sleep under my desk all day while i was working so it's not too much different we have plenty of space for them to you know get around and you know sleep wherever they want they get along with each other really well yeah. and we're you know when we're on long road trips we have to stop you know every several hours to yeah. get fuel anyways so they're able to kind of run around and yeah lots of truck that. stops have like gated in dog parks now which is really cool so they get to run around if we had the money to buy a souped up rv or you know a camper sprinter van 
we definitely could have done that and saved ourselves a lot of trouble but it's just so much more spe special living in a place that you truly created on your own and got to add your little special touches and we're still you know thinking of new things to do in the bus every day i just want to give thanks to gus the struggle bus navigation nowhere uh gilligan phantom and number one like if it wasn't for people like that you know putting out that super helpful content, who knows what this bus would look like. And I think they definitely, you know, inspire more people to get into the field and know that it's possible to do it on your own. for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.